just like, oh no, God can do this and God's going to do this, you know. Yeah. He would just see things that we could not see. So he had the gift of faith. And so that's why we kind of struggled with the sickness because it went in remission, like I said, twice. Right. <clears throat> and we just thought, you know, he was just going to bounce back. But what was unique about his transition was that he was the one who had the peace. Yeah. <laughs> and normally pe- people that, um, you know, have a diagnosis uh, with some type of sickness, they're the one that's kind of worried, kind of, you know, frantic and, you know, trying to plan out, you know, how God is going to do this. And I, y'all better keep me on the yeah. ventilator forever. Yeah. You right. Know? <laughs> if I can't breathe, keep that air I, It's a family meeting. Right. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But dad, um, he was always so transparent with yeah. us at the house and then um, yeah. in front of the congregation. He was always inclusive, including the congregation on his struggle and what was going on. So he didn't hold back any of that. Like what the yeah. doctor said when, um, towards the end when he had to go to the doctor, he missed out like on a couple of main events and he would stream live. And then he would say, well, tell everybody I'm watching live stream. You know, it was yeah. just like, you know, he wanted to be a part of this uh transition and he wanted to expose what was going on to the congregation so nobody would be caught off guard but so he could also show his level of confidence in god yes. being a healer and so through that process he told us you know if god does not turn this thing around if this thing does not turn around like the way i know y'all wanted to and the way i wanted to it's okay. I'm not ooh, afraid of ooh. death. Mm. I'm not afraid of dying. You know, we have eternal life, and this is what's going to happen. Y'all going to be okay. And, you know, he would coach us through this, and we like, wait a minute. You know, for a minute there, we thought that, you know, is he talking doubt? Yeah. He was not talking doubt as much as he was still trying to prepare us for the sovereignty of God. Yes. yes. Mm. And I think that that's a message that, um, a lot of us don't understand, and then when we do hear it, we reject it because we say God is a good God. He never fails. He never lets me down. He He does no wrong, which he does no wrong, and he is good. But the truth is is that sometimes we are let down with his choice or his yes. will or his decision, and yeah. that would, that is what makes him God. He is yeah. sovereign. And so... Um, the way the story ended is that um, he crossed over to the other side. I don't even like to say yeah, died yeah, because yeah. with his death, I now realize what the scriptures talk about, that we that are in Christ Jesus, we will not see death. Yeah. We will never die, yeah. but we will live eternally. Yes. Yeah. And so just like that, it was, it was, I was right there at the bedside, just like that. He closed his eyes here, took his last breath here, and then, you know, instantly he's in the presence of the Lord. Yes. And yeah, it hurts like crazy. Oh sure. my God. What yeah. are you talking about? Those of us that are here left yeah. behind are just, yes. you know, yeah. just still trying to figure out yeah. how to live life without him. But at the same time, I find this peace and confidence knowing that he is in eternity. He yes. is in heaven. He is in a place, a prepared place that was prepared just for him. And I believe that I'm going to have that same reward. Yes. And um, that's how this song happened. Uh, you know, my brother, uh, Pastor C. Kadrikas, yeah. he, uh, he, he knew daddy back, 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 yeah. back, yeah. back in the day. <laughs> and, um, I mean, looking at those old tapes of when we first started the church, I mean, yeah. he always talked about city car, heaven, yeah. city car, yeah. heaven, someday. He always talked yeah. about heaven. I'm like, why do we got to sing about heaven? Yeah. You yeah. know, like, <laughs> let's make this money. Yeah. Let's live our life down right. here. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, and we live life and more this abundantly. Thing, like, he could really throw down on them songs. Oh, them heaven songs. Ron, listen, Ron, Ron, you remember you was doing wor- worship at the church, and sometimes yeah. we'd be getting slammed, and daddy'd be like, that was cool, but y'all sing these old mm-hmm. songs about heaven, you know, and he listen. he really put that in us. Yeah. Be, and, I, and, I, and I believe that that is what we should have as our foundation. Yes. Because the truth is, is that this body is temporary. Yeah. This life is temporal. You know, life is but a vapor. We are here today. And the scriptures always tell us, it says that you are pilgrims. You you mm-hmm. coming through this way. You know, every day, you got to mm-hmm. look at it every day. Yeah, the Lord is renewing our strength like the eagle. But the truth is, is that every day, the Bible even says every day this flesh dies. Yes. And then it says that 
the soul hungers and longs to be oh, yeah. in eternal places with the Father which created yes. us. So it's like, <laughs> we might not be thinking about it on the surface, but at the, at the foundation, at the bottom of your heart and your soul, you are you are longing to be with your creator. Yes. So I thank God for all of this revelation that he gives me yeah. because when those tough nights, after I get done crying, you know, I find some hope in saying that, you know, one day I will see my dad again. So yeah. that's how I was able to write this song. And um, I wanted to dedicate it to people who have lost loved ones. You know, I've yeah. never been in this situation before. So I've never been able to be as transparent and loving to other people or as compassionate and sympathetic to other people who have lost even dogs and now people yeah, that with pets they be like oh my dog that like oh my god i'm so sorry before yeah. i was so like it was your dog you know i was right. just like that was your third removed cousin you know <laughs> and it's, it's so funny how we right. treat people when, right. when they say that they lost somebody you know it's so funny we'd be like oh you know that ain't no why are you crying you should be getting over it now i get it yes yeah yeah. I get it, I get it, get it. And so I wanted to provide, uh, this is my way of, you know, Ron, by you being a PK, Pastor C, you raising kids now, a PK, we've been in ministry our whole life, and growing up in this glass bowl, people see your every move, mm. Pastor oh, telling goodness. all your business in the pulpit. It's like, yeah. you know, you live this transparent life. You grow up in front of the congregation. You yeah. grow up in front of the world. Now you grow up on social media. <laughs> oh, yes. And um, I said, why hide? You know, yeah. why hide now? Yeah. You know, my life yeah. has been an open book. My life is of service now yes. to the to the kingdom. So it's like, let me share my disappointment. Let me share my hurt. But at the That's same good. time, I need to share that I do have this confidence. And I realize that everybody doesn't have this. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I do have to be thankful, you know, that, God, that, that, that I am allowing this peace. Because now I can help somebody else who might be, you know, five years removed from somebody being... Yeah you know, going on in their life and still really struggling with that grief. Yeah. And so right. this is why I wrote that song. And, you know, I want to say this. It's really, the song has really not only been touching the nations, but it's really been touching us. Everybody that came in contact with Bishop, yeah. you know, we all felt affected in some way. Wow. And so, because he was like a father to all of us, <laughs> you know, and it's like, if we didn't, if we weren't in contact in a while, he'd be like, Todd, what's up? Where you been? Where you at, man? Where you at? Right. And I'll never forget, um, the last time I saw Bishop, um, I came over to the church, um, Bishop Paul Morton was there. Oh, yeah. And so we were getting on the elevator, going to the repast, or what do we call it? It's not a the repast. Reception. The reception. The Re reception. Passes my for God. funerals. My God. Uh, the reception. You know, we get a mixed up. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes. We ain't going to the We ain't going to the repast. Right. We're going the to the afterglow. The yeah. reception. Yeah. And so we were the getting on the spot. elevator. And the you, moment. Bishop right. was very observant. Mm -hmm. He didn't miss much, even if he didn't say anything. But if you knew him, you knew that he was checking some things out. Yeah. So. I was looking at him because I hadn't seen him in a while. And so he had lost some weight. And so he grabbed my arm and he said, top, 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 top. <laughs> I'm going to be all right. Yeah. And it's like he got in my, my head. Mm -hmm. Like he knew what I was thinking. He said, mm -hmm. Ty, listen, don't matter, don't matter. <laughs> right. Whatever the case may be, right. just know I'm going to be all right. Yeah. Now you tell me, how is it you start pastoring this Baptist church? <laughs> <Right>. Thank you. <laughs> we know what's going to happen to me. I know what's going on with me. And, but that, that gave me so much peace yeah. because it's like he was good. Yeah. He was good. And that just shows us the, the level of faith that he had yeah. to know that whether I'm here or whether I'm in glory, just know I'm good. I'm good. We're and not supposed to fear death. Yeah. You know, if anything, the Bible says we should cry when the babies are born and um, we should rejoice yes. when we get ready to leave. Yeah. That's 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 the word. I mean, Pastor C, you can correct me if I'm wrong. No, that's, that's, you can Google. Right. Yeah, that's real. Google. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. yeah. this is the truth. Because, you know, you enter this world with all these burdens and all of these, this sure. confinement sure. and this containment to this body. But it's it's a joy when we get to go to glory, you know. Yeah. So I tried to express that a little bit in the song. I I've been getting really good feedback, you know. I I um I can't wait to share it with everybody, uh, because I just feel like at a at a point, you know, somebody can relate to loss. Yes. But the hope comes in. But I know you're in glory, cheering us on, joining with the angels, singing yes. all day long. Yes. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. 
till that day we will see you again and so um for some people it has been uh, a challenge listening to it because again it brings up emotion it brings oh, up yeah. the the natural yeah. feelings i mean yeah. for real what do you do with this void of this person that you had your whole life yeah. all of a sudden this empty space you know i i find myself just have a transparent moment i find myself being busy doing a lot of things and then it's like at the end of the day or at the end of the week or at the end of the month I finally have a day to myself right now I'm chilling and it's like oh I go to pick up my phone and it's like oh call daddy call daddy you know it, it really hit me I just came back from London and I'm just like over there like oh you know who would I share this experience yes. with it is my dad like we was so yes. cool yes. we was so close he was you so know. down to earth we too. he just got me I got him you know I was able to dream with him he was able to dream with me you know and that was like I had that moment I had been traveling eight hours on that plane Ooh. got all the way to the car wire we had finished um a youth meeting at night so now I'm in this other country and I'm in my bedroom, it's like three o'clock in the morning over there and it's, you know, a different time here. And I'm like, I wish I could yeah. call my daddy. Mm -hmm. And what a moment of tears and emotion, you know, but I was able to pick myself up and go on about my day because I'm just like, hey, you know, just because his life ended did not mean that my life had to end. And I believe that's why I'm going so hard now with the things that God put in my heart, you know, I, yeah. I'm, I've been doing a whole lot since since my dad passed, and I feel like it's because, you know, he like, hey, daughter, you know, you served me to death, so do what's in your heart. Yeah, yeah. So. and I believe also, Steph, you know, in addition to that, this is, um, you're carrying the torch. Yeah. And I believe that, pass the torch to you, you know, wow. uh, I, I really believe, thinking about his heart and his desire to travel, yeah. to do mission ministry. Right. How many churches did, did, did he plant? It was one church in Ghana. One church in Ghana. But he's been to Israel, Africa, yeah. South Africa, West Africa, um, uh, Jerusalem. Yeah. I mean, he loved traveling internationally. Yeah. So so that heart to do mission ministry, yeah. you know, and then to carry it on. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I have no doubt he's up there cheering it on. You know, yeah. go ahead, Steph, yeah. you're doing your thing. It's... Uh, the Bible talks about a mantle, mm -hmm. and I really believe God, uh, that uh, Bishop passed that mantle on to you, wow. a mantle giving you the authority to function in your calling, wow. and you are walking in that calling. Wow. You're walking your authority. Yes, you have international ministry. That. I've always felt like that. You've had yeah. major you ministry, have, man, worship ministry to transform lives. Uh, so keep doing you, you know, mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, that's what's so joyful about this song and yeah. about you as a person being transparent. Yeah. Because some people feel as though uh, I've got to put a time on grieving. Yeah. And I've always told individuals, there is no time on grieving. Yeah. Don't grieve yourself to death. Grieve right. yourself to life. Yeah. So there's no time limit on grieving. And this song ministers to, ministers to that. You yeah. know, your, your heart of transparency when you came over to Jackson just did a major ministry moment during your worship talking about dad's transition, talking yeah. about uh, what's in your heart as it pertains to how you dealt with the yeah. transition, how the family dealt with the transition. Who wants to receive that? Who wants to see, Nobody. you know, the loved one? No, <clears throat> going to heaven now? No, we, we all get raptured up together. You know, right. Superman, right. you ain't leaving here, you know. Right. Uh, but coming to a resolve, and yeah. I just want to ask, what has been your resolve? What has brought you to the place of confidence? I heard you talking earlier about um, uh, the song and, and, and those moments of, of how, you know, you feel like God has ministered to you to, to minister lost to, to minister the hurt of the lost, the loved ones, what has been your resolve in knowing that for certain, mm -hmm. I'm good? In the words of that, I'm, I, we good. We yeah. good. Now, what is that resolve? What is the resolve you've come to that you are good? Well, um, just just learning how to accept, again, the sovereignty of God. Yeah. In um, Romans, it says, it was no good that they have done, and it was no evil mm -hmm. that they had done. Mm -hmm. But it was also my election might be sure and that's mm. a tough mm. tough pill to swallow yes, who, who in the world i never even read that scripture <laughs> right, right, like, right. who reads that and, yeah. and is okay with yeah. it right. it's like okay go find another god then you right, know right. find a god <laughs> that's gonna be like okay i'm gonna give you that's what real. you want that's you know real. and again i that's think real. that's that's our issue with christianity though 
um, and for me because mm. it's like I only know God to be good. Yeah. I know, and especially now, knowing yeah. what we know as far as yeah. confessions and the words of our mouth, yes. right? And 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 if I pray this, then then God is gonna gonna do this. And these things that I pray, um, these things that I believe that I received when I prayed, right? Yeah. And so Christianity it, nowadays, we don't hear this gospel that sometimes it might not turn out the way that you thought it should, right? And But the word also says that to every man there is a season. Mm -hmm. He's given us all a time to live and a time to die. Mm -hmm. And wrestling with that, but why do his time got to be now? Like, I know evil people. I know people. I know my neighbors. I got a list. You want to come look right here? That you can take right now. That's Why real. you got to take this yeah, one? This is real. a man of God. This is a good man. Like, you know. And so, the um, I don't even really know how to answer this question correctly. But to say that every day, it's a daily renewing myself in his presence and saying, like, it's all good. He had his course. And th- I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm 36 years old. And I'm just now figuring out that. I have individual purpose. We get so mixed up with that even when it comes Mm. with marriage. I'm divorced now. And after my divorce, it was so traumatic because two becoming one. You know, all Stephanie was all of my ex-husband, all of my ex. But but where's the separation that God called you for a purpose? He called you for an assignment. And that that goes with mother, father, sister, and brother. God is called. I mean, think about Jesus having telling his mama that. Like, mama, I'm down here with the (laughs) Pharisees and Sadducees teaching in in the temple. She's like, you 12 years old. You get your butt over here. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) You know, even at a young age, Jesus understood his purpose was separated from his mother. And so now it's like mm-hmm. at the death of my father I'm I'm the, I was the praise and worship leader the project coordinator my office is set in between my parents when we built our church and then we moved over here my office was right there on the side all of us been on the same calling plan I mean it was like the holy trinity all yeah, three of yeah, us yeah, just yeah. like locked in I wasn't his wife I was his daughter yeah. and his vision was my vision I turned down jobs to to minister out of town just so I could stay with with them because I felt like my job and my position even though I it, salary wise wasn't right <laughs> I, I love you daddy salary wise <laughs> salary wise I wasn't getting paid what I felt like I could have made, but it was because I knew my place and I knew my assignment was to undergird his vision. His vision was my vision. And so it was at that point of death where I had to freaking wrestle with Stephanie. You have a purpose for your life. What is your purpose? What is your call? And so his is over. And I think that that's going to be something my resolve now is, Learning that Ron had, I can't be mad at Ron for going after the things that he go after. Amen. He got a job to do. Yeah. He got a, a purpose to fulfill. Yeah. So I had to realize that, and so that's what gives me my energy. And that's not selfishness. No, no, no that's no. maturity. Oh yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and say, hey, you got to grow up now. You got to do what God told you to do. Mm-hmm. That's right. And so that's my resolve now. You know, when he would tell us, I'm good. I get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because he was saying, Stephen Bennett Sr., this yeah. is me, my assignment, this is my life, yeah. this was my course. Yes. And it. here is the yeah. pen. I finished it. Yeah. Now y'all run well with y'all. Come on. And you know what? <laughs> I, I want to talk about the aftermath a little more. So I want you to throw to your new single. I'm so excited about it. I'm so glad you got it. Okay, this is See You Again, and this is dedicated to anybody who's ever experienced any kind of loss. Know that you will see them again.